Hey guys, real quick test here for you today with the SOK Servo Rack Batteries. So a few weeks ago I published a video where I was racking up these batteries and showing how to connect them in parallel. And I mentioned in that video that it's important for these batteries to be at the same state of charge, or more specifically the same voltage, prior to connecting them in parallel. Now Current Connected watched my video and they let me know that these batteries actually have current limiting built in. And we kind of knew that from when we had looked closer at the BMS before and we saw the, uh, I guess they're inductors or something on the circuit board of the BMS. However, I don't personally have a very good understanding of how that whole inductor current limiting thing works. But Current Connected did tell me that theoretically the BMS in these batteries should limit current flow to about 10 amps if you were to either intentionally or accidentally connect an empty battery to a full battery. Now, in my personal opinion, it's still very important to make sure these batteries are at the same voltage prior to connecting them together. I think that's just, you know, best practice from a safety perspective. We're going to test out today and see what happens when you connect a full battery to an empty battery, see how much current flows, and see if the BMS actually does catch it as it's supposed to. So one thing I wanted to make note of too is I did end up switching these interconnections between the battery packs to all sit on the same stud the whole way down. Previously I had like one here, and then I had one here, and then I had one here. And what that results in is the current actually has to go through one stud and out the other side, right? So it's still, you know, in theory it, it works just fine. However, I feel like having these lugs sit right on top of one another on the post of the battery is a better conductive path going straight up rather than having to worry about both of these terminals. There is plenty of length on this bolt to support multiple lugs, so I just ended up rewiring the whole thing that way. All right, so battery number three is completely discharged. We're at 48.6 volts. Battery number four is completely charged and we're at 54.1 volts. So I'm going to uh, flip the circuit breaker for the fully charged battery on, which should charge the empty battery. Additionally, I have my laptop off to the side running the BMS toolkit so we can see if anything interesting shows up there. Uh, so here we go. All right, so we got 19.47 amps. Oh, look at that. So if you look on the toolkit here, it says charge limit on. So it is limiting the charge current. That is very, very cool. So it's limiting it to about 20 amps, it looks like. So yeah, we were able to successfully replicate that. The clamp meter is still showing 20 amps as well. Uh, so the empty battery is showing 49.6 volts at 20 amps. And the full battery is showing 52.7 volts at 20 amps. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that to actually work that quickly and so well. We'll just let that run and let these batteries equalize themselves out. All right, so that was a very cool demonstration, a very cool test. About 10 amps are still flowing, so the batteries are still equalizing, but the amount of current has dropped by about half of what we saw originally. Again, I still recommend having these batteries at the same voltage prior to paralleling them together. I think that's best from a safety perspective. However, I do like seeing that some of these companies have taken into consideration that people may, you know, not always connect them in the best or the most preferred way. Uh, so it is a great safety feature as well to have that included. Uh, so yeah, hit that like button before you go. Any questions or comments, you can leave those. And thanks for watching.